Hello, this is, uh, this is another discussion, uh, this time with Antonio on collaborative entrepreneurship. And we're gonna frame it around this course that uh, we uh, in Sensorica are building around collaborative entrepreneurship and uh, um, also with um, other people around the world. Antonio, if you're interested in this course, uh, you can definitely add to it and even uh, roll it out uh, whatever you want in Barcelona. Um, but so general discussion about collaborative entrepreneurship, focusing a little bit on a, a, a course, um, a formal way to sort of uh, educate, provide this information to uh, people that would like to follow this path of entrepreneurship. And um, uh, before we start talking about uh, the subject, maybe hear a little bit more about Antonio and what he is doing. Meanwhile, Antonio, while you're presenting yourself, I'm going to start to share uh, my screen here and uh, I'll go to okay. uh, your website. All right. Uh, I'm Antonio Blanco Gracia. I've been a consultant for, for 20 years on organization strategy and communication. And uh, in some point, I started work for uh, several networks, uh, networks of uh, universities, networks of uh, local governments, networks of, of firms, networks of librarians. So I, I started to understand this, this whole networks. And, uh, and, and also I, I am a, I'm a researcher, I did a PhD I got a PhD uh, researching on how imagination works when people is doing things together. And I study that through the metaphors, the symbols, and the myths that uh, people use unconsciously. So, um, so in some point of my, of my research, I was looking for a specific kind of polarization of the imagination, and I, and I look for extreme examples of, of that. And I end up uh, studying two of them. Two, uh, one was a group of activists called XNet, which were uh, recently uh, spotted by, uh, by uh, Rolling Stone magazine, like they were in the list of the 20 most uh, uh, subversive or uh, people that are changing the world, like. I don't know. It was Elon Musk, and then and then uh, and then Simona Levy from Xnet. Can you repeat the name of this group? Xnet. Xnet. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And the other was uh, people I, I I guess you know or or at least you you heard about them. They are the Las Indias Electronicas. Yes. It's a little group in Madrid, and uh, they have uh, written uh, exceptional ideas on um, peer-to-peer modes, uh, peer -peer modes of production. And uh, so I, I spent time with them, I did things with them. I, I, I jumped in their projects, so I learned how they worked. And, uh, and I modelized, I modelized more or less uh, uh, how, how, they, how, they, how they organized themselves. Um, uh, it's a general model that, that covers uh, uh, the common, uh, what I understand, the, the, the common patterns of these two organizations. One is uh, an activist group. Uh, the other is a, is, a, is a group of a cooperative, a little cooperative group that is oriented for profit on the market. And um, uh, so, so I, uh, so I did that, and uh, uh, and I presented the model to them, and they said, "Well, uh, this is pretty much how we so we organize ourselves." So I have I have that, and uh, I and since I started to work with one of the colleagues of, from XNet in some projects uh, from some of my clients, uh, uh, we end up uh, collaborating and uh, and starting this new project that we call Pantheon Work. And Pantheon Work is a, is a group that is trying to bring these uh, practices that I 
I collected and this uh, way of going uh, to the market to orient the organization uh, to to mainstream organizations okay to any organization and we have found that uh, well some of them are really hard to translate but most of them can be adapted uh, in some extent so uh, that's what we're doing and we, we started a few months ago and we want to uh, to put all our experience and our model uh, openly to, to be shared with anyone and to learn from anyone that can, that would like to contribute. So uh, yeah, so this is what we are doing and, and, and two of us, uh, uh, Alvaro Solace and, um, and me, we are interested in, in entrepreneurship. We think that, we, that uh, we think that entrepreneurship must be reinvented. And uh, so we were looking for, uh, for something to do in that field uh, take into account when we learn from Xnet and, and Lasinius Electronics and all that. So, um, so when we uh, when we learn about your your project, the course, we thought that would be interested to at least talk and see if we can uh, join or or at least learn from from it. And uh, yeah, that's why we are here. Yes. So you were talking about Xnet, not Nextnet. No, no, wait, uh, I show you, um, I'm going to... You were talking about this, Xnet? Yeah. Yes, okay, perfect. Well, yeah, it's, uh, it's very interesting, uh, your, your path from activism towards, you know, um, organizational models for essentially economic development, right? Um, and entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. um, I kind of have a similar path, so <laughs> I, uh, I associate with uh, with what you were saying there. <clears throat> uh, and uh, so, what about uh, Pantheon? Uh, when did you create it, and uh, how far has it gone? <clears throat> yeah, we started talking about this uh, autumn last year with Sergio yes. at Xnet, and uh, so we started to talk and to and to think about it and uh, we and we start to talk uh, about about it uh, in our ecosystem the closest ecosystem and two more people joined and then we and we put uh, this website uh, online like two or three months ago and uh, and after doing this and uh, and, and uh, um, and communicating it in LinkedIn, we, we, we got a couple of contracts. So, so at least this is interesting in the market. I mean, in the market, we, we, have, through, we have passed the test of the market. We have clients uh, with this. We're helping to a pharma, well, no, it's a consultancy firm that works for the pharma industry. They're, they're 25, they're growing fast, and they don't want to lose the lean, uh, let's say, flat organization they have. So they asked us to help with that. And the other is a global network of uh, NGOs, uh, and, we're, and we're working with them to help them to organize campaigning together. So this is the kind of projects we are, we're doing right now. And, uh, and uh, um, some and some that we are uh, working on to to get, and uh, and entrepreneurship is something that we're it's not a demand but something we want to do. Okay, so okay, uh, essentially, we started essentially, to talk about. It. Yeah, so essentially, you're uh, helping organizations to organize as networks to see themselves as more open and transparent structures, and to adopt a more network-like structure instead of uh, a hierarchical. Um, structure right mm -hmm. yeah but uh, again uh, we don't since they are traditional organizations uh, we don't tell them they have to reinvent themselves uh, we don't have to tell them how to they have to earn money because they contract now so they have money they make money but uh, we are helping them to solve of the problems they experience as traditional organizations by introducing some practices that we learn from the culture of the internet, basically, we call it that, that way. Right? Okay. So, uh, 
yeah, so that's what we do. We introduce practices uh, from the culture of the internet uh, to help them to solve problems like internal communication or the value proposal and so on. So on. Yeah, so I see here that you're inspired by uh, val the value network concept, which is, was advanced by Verna Ali back in the 90s, I think, early 90s. Uh, Sensorica also mm -hmm. we got uh, heavily influenced by by Vernali's work uh, on value networks and um, at some point in the history of development of Sensorica we decided to change the term to open value networks um, but uh, it's uh, funny that we we kind of have a similar root mm -hmm. <laughs> you know when it comes to to our models uh, or the models that we propose or we enact we have a similar root um, wow you know, the, in all the inspiration from uh, Verna Ali's work. Uh, <clears throat> good. So, um, okay, so we understand a little better uh, your interest about uh, collaborative entrepreneurship and, uh, and uh, maybe where you could uh, help refine the structure of this, uh, of this course. So, uh, before we started to record, um, we were talking about um, um, some topics to address and uh, you asked me uh, who are we addressing the course to, who are these collaborative entrepreneurs um, as a first question, which is a, which is a good question. Why do, you make, why do you make the course for? <clears throat> so uh, th there are different dimensions to this question. Uh, first of all, I, uh, there is the cultural dimension. Um, there is some, uh, a young generation today that respond to a different set of values. Uh, they don't find themselves uh, well within the capitalist entrepreneurship model, uh, but uh, at, at the same time, the, the social economy model or the co-op model is, uh, is uh, or the non-profit model is too restrictive for them. Uh, and then you have the emergence of what we call the collaborative economy uh, with its own practices and its own organizational structures and it seems that uh, some of these some some of the people within this generation they respond very well uh to these things so uh you know um if you don't want to go the for-profit model uh, uh and if you want to go the non-for-profit model there is an in-between which we call the collaborative model um and there's a distinction between collaborative economy and social economy collaborative enterprise and social enterprise and and um i'm going to make that distinction um maybe a little later. So we're addressing these people that, that fall in between these, these traditional models. Um, on the practical side, um, we uh, want to talk to individuals that have a great idea, want to scale it, but have no financial means uh, to do it. Uh, and what uh, our observation is that uh, the, collaborative the collaborative entrepreneurship recipe allows you to reduce your financial uh, barriers to launch an enterprise up to uh, 80%. So um, it's an 80% reduction of uh, the need of initial funding to launch something on the market. Uh, it doesn't mean that this, it's, not, it's done without effort uh, because nothing is created out of thin air. Nothing is created from nothing, right? Um, it's just that uh, it's, it's, it's a different way to enlist participation in your project that kind of bypasses um, this initial uh, financial uh, investment, uh, and um, and uh, you you provide a, a collaborative entrepreneurship is a is a is a, an alternative for individuals that have great ideas but no financial means to bring them uh, to grow them. Uh, so we're catering to these people. Okay, you're in your basement, you're tinkering, you think you have a solution to a problem, you think many people would love to have that thing. Um, but, uh, you know, um, you don't see yourself raising $100,000 to start a startup and uh, you don't see yourself uh, spending a year or two to convince uh, foundations um, to fund uh, your non-for-profit organization, uh, then you can go the collaborative, collaborative entrepreneurship uh, route. Um, so, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. So this is very interesting because uh, this is uh, resonates with, with our uh, initial research on the field. Uh, we are talking about two different people. Okay. One is, the, is this person that has an idea 
and is uh, experienced some difficulties to uh, to follow the traditional path, mostly because he ha he or she has no access to uh, the financial initial financial means in he needs or she needs uh, at the beginning. Okay, but the other is. Uh, is uh, is another one is uh, you said uh, you said young generation that responds to a different set of values okay so uh, the value proposition for each for each uh, for each one is different for me for the first one I wrote it the other day it's something like this it's something like would you like to create your own job by working on what you are passionate about with people you like or you admire. So this is for me the value proposition, and um, entrepreneurship, uh, at least in Europe, is seen and has been pushing uh, by by everyone like the solution for young uh, employment of the young people. But then there are there's no way they can follow that path, for instance, because of financial issues. Yes. So it's a, it's a it's a joke as a strategy. It's a joke. Unless you change and you go like we are proposing, right? So I, I think that for these people, like the way that you can go to the job market, uh, the way you want with the people you like, doing what you are passionate about, you know, in a flexible way with different values that they that you will find joining a corporation. That's that's one that's one uh, target. The other is is the uh, is uh, the other uh, value proposition is for the other group is, okay, we show you how to go through this with uh, an alternative uh, mode of financing entrepreneurship, okay? Uh, yes. uh, so uh, so you, you perfectly answer my, my question then you, uh, so we can, so we, so we can identify what is the value proposition for each one because the mimetics of the underworking and 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 the and the uh, and the stigma, if you want, are probably different for each one. Okay, so um, so we have to take to have to take that in that into account, right? And and the fact we want to get them, yes, uh, because I don't know. Uh, the first one is not it is not thinking about I'm going i going to launch an app, I'm going to rely on my daddy's money and if I fail, it's no problem, I bounce back because I have my daddy's money and at the end I'm going to, uh, I'm going to sell in some point my app to Google, okay? That's, that's, uh, yeah. that's people that find out there all the time and most of the people that do it well in the, in the traditional entrepreneurship is, is follows that pattern. Um, but if you have another people that is open to follow another path that is no, is no, uh, don't feel angst for, for collaborate or for being a, a solo hero that is going to, you know, to build this, uh, then uh, then you have uh, you have a lot of opportunities with this new new, new way of doing things because they 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 work. I mean, at least I am paying the rent following this this kind of this kind of, uh, um, of of way of doing business right and and you too so uh, so we know it works and we want to share it with uh, with other people yes you just mentioned the word there and i wanted to capture it here because the hero entrepreneur, I, I, I mentioned this many, many times in my presentations. Okay. Um, also, I added the question, why the course? Why did we decide to make the course? Um, so we're running this Sensorica Lab for the almost 10 years now, where we nurture what we call collaborative entrepreneurship. Okay. What is it? You know, it's defined by the course. But we nurture this kind of new practice. And we notice that people that come to us from the corporate environment or, you know, off, off, this, off school, um, it takes approximately two years for somebody to get accustomed to the collaborative entrepreneurship environment and to absorb and understand collaborative entrepreneurship models just by soaking into this environment, which is the Centroica Lab and the Centroica community. Uh, that's, that's a lot of time. 
And we said, you know, we after after a, almost a decade of of nurturing these kind of practices and and refining them, at some point we said, well, we, did, we should we should we should spend the time to formalize a course, an education program, to provide these individuals uh, in a, in a more structured way information and and, and knowledge about uh, you know collaborative entrepreneurship, so that so that we, we can reduce the two years adaptation. Uh, just by soaking in the environment to maybe six months, uh, uh, what do we expect uh, students to? So, what do we expect these, these students to do right after the course is to um, start operating with the mindset of collaborative entrepreneurship, which doesn't mean that they need to adopt very uh, how do you say um, uh, very new and and and. Uh, uh, cutting edge organizational structures uh, they, they they can actually function within uh, classical uh, or, or or traditional organizations uh, like a normal startup but they can still adopt um, some um, practices from the collaborative economy so it's a little bit like you were saying you know you work with organizations you don't want to remake these organizations into open value networks or open networks um, like like the Bitcoin network for example or ethereum uh, but but you want them to adopt adopt some new practices right uh, from mm -hmm. the sharing and collaborative economy sphere um, so this is what we expect our students to do to, to get sensitized to these new practices, uh, to understand how these new practices could apply to their directly to their business, um, and eventually, you know, their organization to migrate towards something that looks like more like an, an open enterprise, um, an, an, a network that is more open and, and more transparent <clears throat> as an organizational form, right? Um, yes. Um, and how do people start the collaborative venture? Uh, well, that's exactly what the course is uh, after, to give uh, these individuals everything they need uh, to start one. Um, so if we, if we look at the, um, um, what we have identified as sections of the course, uh, um, you know, um, create a collaborative venture, which is just, Create when we say create a collaborative venture here is creating the um, make it exist, creating the the formal structure. Um, so so the, as the organization as a container, let's say, and, and as a legal entity. Uh, but then everything else, defining the mission, the vision, uh, the value proposition, and how you get to uh, in, enlist contributors and and consumers, and how do you get to your consumers. Uh, your innovation strategy, your operations, you know, all that is part of building and, and managing a, a, a collaborative venture, right? So all that is the recipe of collaborative entrepreneurship. Um, so I just want to distinguish here between just creating the container organization, creating the structure, and actually make it a living system, uh, you know, um, make it a real organization with real people and, and, and an economic model that can sustain itself. Uh, so the course, the course is, about, is about all that, uh, right? Um, so, yeah, so um, these discussions are about the structure of this course mostly. Okay. Uh, and any one of these sections will be developed in, in the near future with content, okay? Um, uh, but, um, when you look here, for example, somebody comes to you and he says, um, I heard about collaborative entrepreneurship. I'm an entrepreneur uh, for X and Y reasons. I don't want to take the traditional path. Um, show, me how to, show me how to launch a collaborative enterprise. Uh, well, these are uh, the, the, the main topics that, that we identified um, to provide somebody this information in a structured way. Um, and I would like to, to know if you, um, if it seems okay with you or if you want to add some steps or if you think some steps are redundant. Um, when you read these steps, um, you know, it might 
some of them might seem very familiar to you. For example, define vision, mission, and positioning. Every entrepreneur does that for their, for their enterprise. Um, this is something written in a language that is probably a little foreign to traditional entrepreneurs. Value proposition is okay, but when you talk about prosumers, consumers, and users, and incentive systems, what you see here is closing the loop, meaning collaborative entrepreneurship, uh, like, like, like you know from your studying the concept of value networks, uh, you know, it, blurs the, it blurs the distance between, or the distinction between uh, contributors and consumers. Uh, and and uh, users, right? Uh, meaning <clears throat> a, a user or a consumer can be a prosumer, meaning can provide feedback. Um, being a collaborative entrepreneur is also knowing how to include feedback from the ones you serve, right? Uh, mm -hmm. and, and include them into, into, into the value chain, include them into your innovation uh, uh, processes and so on and so forth. So this is a little bit typical to the collaborative economy. When you close the loop with the consumers, in they're not just customers. They're not just your users. Uh, they you can, you should actually value them as potential uh, potential innovators, uh, mm. right? Um, this is very typical to collaborative entrepreneurship. Um, also, you know, uh, new language outreach. You know, in 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 traditional business you talk about uh, uh, marketing and advertising um, in in our world we talk about outreach uh, and it's it's less than a projection of 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 of, of information uh, and it's more uh, it tends to be more inclusive because you always talk about what you do and let people talk about what you do uh, but you uh, are not just selling them something but you're getting them interested eventually even to participate in what you do so you see that um, there is a mapping into, into, into traditional entrepreneurship courses that you see in, in business schools uh, with, a, with a slight change of language. Um, usually in the courses that you see in schools, they talk about finance and accounting, let's say. Uh, here we lump everything into resources uh, because the, the whole thing in the collaborative economy and the sharing economy is about sharing assets it's about crowdsourcing. Um, so um, traditional entrepreneurs might think, well, I need a piece of equipment in order to produce what I need to produce. Uh, so I need the capital to, I need the funding to buy it. Yeah. Uh, collaborative entrepreneurs might think, well, can I find someone that has one and I can share with? So if you let me, uh, this, is, uh, this is my, uh, this was my initial reaction when I saw the for the first time the the, the cursive structure, is that um, and I think I I told you that in a conversation and that's why we're talking now, is that uh, I see I don't see the logic of the collaborative entrepreneurship in the cursive structure and I would like to see that, and I explain myself. Um, in the collaborative uh, uh, entrepreneurship. Well, you, you do what with what you have at hand, right? And you do, nothing stops you to start in the entrepreneurship uh, because you, you start with, 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 with the, the resources you have at hand. And, 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 and at hand means in your network as well, okay? So it's about, for me, at least as I understand it, is to uh, understand where you are, so what's your network, and what are the resources available in your network? Okay. And for me, this is like uh, like like the, the right mindset to, to begin with, right? Uh, it's not like what structure I'm going to have. Uh, that can come later. It's the first thing is what are the the, the the what are the resources in my in my network? Because we if, if someone has already constituted. Uh, a traditional firm or a cooperative, or a, we can build on that. It's, a, it's, a, it's a, an additional asset we have, or a foundation, an association, I don't know. So, so this is one, one of the principal assets we can build on. So for me, uh, the, the, the mindset starts with, okay, where are we? Uh, and it just has to be with the outreach as well. <laughs> Do you work with two things at the same time? Uh, so is uh, who are with me in this? Uh, I'm going to tell my, my network what, what I'm thinking about. I am going to have conversations there and I'm going to see uh, what I can, uh, what I can find them there. Uh, what ideas, what, what kind of projects, what kind of 
problems we can solve out there, but and, and all that you can get from getting interesting conversations. And I learned that from the from the Las Indias. Las Indias said you have to have always interesting conversations. And if you don't have, you're not having an interesting conversation, uh, you have to step out. You know, you have to you you're not doing you're not doing things right. So um, for for me, it's very important to to. To, to start the course like like having this this uh, network mindset to see okay I'm here but I'm here and I have a network and my network have network so uh, let's see what I have at hand to start my entrepreneurship I what resources are going to we're going to put in common because as you said this is a key issue in collaborative what what are the what are the not not, not just the financial assets if any what talents, what skills, what ideas, what connections, all that, all that is what we have uh, to start our entrepreneurship. But this and the, and the availability of all this is what is going to make our path different and, and less dependent of uh, in business angels, right? So for me, it's, uh, it's very important to start um, soon on that mindset not at the end like the mission I mean, because at the end the mission and the vision is something that is going to uh, if you go solo uh, it's okay to think okay this is my mission and the vision but if you uh you want to do this with more people in a collaborative way then it's something that's going to kind of emerge uh from again an interesting conversation we're going to figure it out together So that's why I, I told you that we have different paths here. If you go to the to this person that has one idea, then you then you can start with the okay. Tell me about maybe 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 about the business opportunity he has at hand. Uh, he has in mind. She has in mind, right? Yes. So, um, so I uh, I see like these two these two starting points from talking about about uh, entrepreneurship is like. If you're going because you don't, you want to do it differently, and you don't, you don't fit in the traditional way, then start with the network mindset. Okay, what we have at hand together. Okay, what are uh, what are the assets we're going to to we have uh, available for us? Yes. And then the other is okay. If you have an idea, tell me about this idea. Tell me about this business model. Uh, before talking about about the the platform you're going to use it to, to organize things and I think I think to start by putting the the resources in one in one hand and the opportunity you have ambition and you have to test don't forget that you have to test that that uh, is, is is an is an a hypothesis so uh, so uh, but uh, but again you have someone in mind that has a problem and you're going to solve it. So let's talk about that, and because after that we're going to um, we're going to look again and into the network mindset. Okay, okay, we're going to focus our network mindset around the problem or uh, the solution or the idea you have. Okay, but uh, I don't know if it, that makes sense to you, but this is how I see it. Yes, yes, yes. Um, yeah, I, I, I understand. So, so you're, you're having in mind a scenario where somebody comes to you with an idea and you want to lead them towards uh, uh, becoming a, a collaborative entrepreneur. Uh, maybe there is a different um, uh, order. Uh, and there's a, probably a different order which is more, more theoretical or pedagogical um, and, and, and not necessarily uh, pragmatic. Um, the, this is pedagogy here. Uh, and I'm not saying it's the best. <laughs> uh, maybe the, the the proper way to present these topics would be uh, your chronological order here of uh, explaining someone in a bar uh, how to do uh, how to how to pursue its ideas, his ideas uh, um, using the collaborative entrepreneur uh, recipe. Maybe this is the more preferred. Uh, order in uh, pedagogically speaking, or maybe it's this one. Uh, I don't know. Uh, yeah, this is for instance. This is something that we we could test in different in exactly. Different courses, yes, right? yes, yes, yes. Uh, yes. But, this is uh, more conceptual. This is more conceptual. Meaning, uh, let us 
show you all everything you need to make a, 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 your collaborative venture exist. Uh, let's talk about vision, mission, positioning. What it is, vision and mission and positioning, and how do you write mission, vision, mission, vision, mission, positioning for your own organization? Let's do an exercise. You know, so so it's what it is, and let's and let's let's craft one. Uh, same thing with value proposition. What is value proposition? I mean, look, if you go to uh, if we go to number four, for example. Um, um, or any any one of these sections, uh, as a matter of fact, mm. uh, you know, you have uh, a little bit of a theory. Uh, what is a resource? A little bit of a theory. Uh, talking about skills. Talking about assets. Uh, talking about property regimes. So it's it's more like writing a a, a, a book. Uh, uh, you know, what I'm saying a textbook on on collaborative entrepreneurship um, uh, from a theoretical perspective. So it's a way of organizing concepts. Mm -hmm. uh, to be delivered as 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 knowledge, right? Mm -hmm. uh, rather than uh, a pragmatic way uh, uh, in a in 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 a bar in a meeting, um, mm -hmm. um, trying to uh, seduce someone to follow the collaborative entrepreneurship path. Uh, you see what I'm saying? There is there is one pragmatic way and there is one theoretical way. Uh, yeah. And 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 I think and I think some students they like. They like they like very much the pragmatic way. Put me in context and 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 take me by hand and walk me through the steps. Uh, and other people prefer the more theoretical. Let me give you the concepts, the definitions, the theory, and then let's go to practice. And you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, this is yeah. the this is about pedagogical approach, which has to be refined in experience, right? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, no, I, I got your point. I, you're challenging. You're challenging the 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 the, the pedagogical approach. Uh, yeah. And I took notes here. Um, yeah, I'm challenging that because I, I always would try to uh, introduce some 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 little practices so they can so they can begin to enter in, in each session. They could be able to to start to put in practice this mindset, right? Yes. Even with a little with a little exercise, okay. So um, so for me to start in something that compels them, like like what are you, what is the like uh, in one side we have these people that we want to do this together. Yeah. We want to do animation uh, film together, okay. But we don't know how to go to the market, and we don't want to do the traditional film, okay. So. For me to understand, okay, so tell me what you want, why, what you, what you have, what, what you know, what are your skills, what, what can you offer? Okay, so this is a natural way to start the, so, so the, it's talking about the resources, right? And 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 so um, and if you and if you tell them, and then when you go outside and you're going to start, you have to do this and you have to learn uh, about uh, about uh, you have to map. I map the relevant voices, the relevant places, the relevant, you know, uh, uh, authors that you can get ideas from, the relevant people in your ecosystem, and so forth. So you can yeah. start doing this little mapping, this initial mapping with the people in the in the classroom, and then go to the next step. So, so now you, you we know where we are. Okay, so now we are where we are. We have at hand, and what can we put in common? And we can some. Uh, and you, or, or you can sum how many hours you have available of workforce. Just this little exercise, right? So, and uh, and then the next time we in the next session, we're going to talk about the business opportunities we can find them, for instance, right? And then yeah. start building from with this with this market perspective and this commons perspective, and uh, and, and and you can be very theoretical in both uh, because I, for instance, if I. I would do that, and I want to. And I want to talk about mapping. I would introduce theoretical concepts about networks, like yeah. net, and and networks and, and and structures of networks and and nodes and properties of the nodes and the properties of the different kinds of networks and so forth. So, forth. so you can be very theoretical in any step and very practical in any step. But um, I, again, my, my point, and I, I won't insist anymore on that, is that if we can, if you said, uh, I've I, I seen that also, uh, what you described in Sensorica in, in Wisher, okay? In Wisher, 
and when when they when they try to when they approach and they want to be more involved, they're quite confused. Like they see like what the, what, what the, how does it work? Because uh, okay, so uh, there are connectors and there are active members, but uh, yeah, there's this Lumia, but this is Telegram, there's Slack, there's there's lots of channels, yes. lot of things going on, and and they they completely lost and they and they and they and they uh, end up leaving or just figuring it out. Uh, after I don't know months probably okay <laughs> so okay now I can so I, okay so I have what I have to do one if I want to propose something I have to go to Lumio but then I have to so so uh, I I've seen that uh, and 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 I think it's more than uh, it's a it's a mindset that prevents them to understand them from the from the very beginning because they expect something more structured okay that and they don't find the structure they don't find the hierarchies, they don't find the clear uh, routes and paths to follow in that, in that, in that uh, group that is we share. So, um, so my point is, what if, you, if they start to experience from the very beginning of the course with, of, in a pedagogical way, what, to, what is the collaborative mindset, okay? Yes. Okay, um, um, I got a point from you, introduce some theoretical info about networks. Mm -hmm. I think this was missing from the course and I think it fits within this section where we talk about create a collaborative venture and in that portion we talk about mapping of the value system, mapping mm -hmm. the resources that you were talking about that you have in your network. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, the legal aspects and you know creating this container uh, we are taking the approach of the rea which is the ontology for modeling network uh, economic um, activities and uh, you know there is this this pattern here uh, the policy layer the scheduling layer the accountability layer uh, where are your, your contracts and your governance um, is is um, uh, described and so uh, this comes from Bill McCarthy from um, Michigan State Univ University. Um, he is the, uh, the guy behind the RE model, uh, which stands for um, resources, events, and agents. Mm -hmm. And, and this, this ontology is used to create a language to describe network economic processes including mm. organizational structures right that contain this kind of uh economic activities uh, yeah. so since our nrp the tool that we use to uh to do manage uh, to to do resource management and, and process management um within what we call the collaborative venture uh this tool is based on rea uh, but, but yeah but various uh uh, okay, I, I, if you put this uh, slide up front in your course, people is going to run. <laughs> no, 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 no. Sorry, sorry, sorry. So this okay. is not, we're not talking okay. about content here. We're okay, talking about, okay. We're talking about a topic. Yeah, okay. we're not into content. No, this is not. This is not the presentation of the course. Yeah. It's okay. Not. Okay. 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 Because, because I yeah because you see the the level of abstraction of this. I mean, yes. Yes. Requires a pre comprehension of what we're talking about. Right. Yeah. That's why yeah. I can read it because I have a pre-comprehension of what we're talking about. But, yeah. Uh, okay. So okay. So. Um, so, so the just... whole the whole presentation here is not the course. Uh, okay. The cor the course will will have the the course will be very long and will have nine sessions, uh, mm -hmm. maybe twelve sessions, because some mm -hmm. of these some of these topics here require maybe two sessions, and every session uh, it's like three hours course. So we're talking here about uh, a course that spans a few months. Uh, so it's, it's really, uh, you know, it's not a weekend thing uh, and it's not a three hour thing with a presentation. Um, mm -hmm. it's, it's really a full course where people come back every week uh, and mm -hmm. absorb some theory and, and, and collaborate and do some exercises together. Mm -hmm. um, yes. So, yeah, that's, that's so good point. yes, um, it, 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 has to, it has to be simple. This is just here to remind us uh, when we discuss what we're talking about when we talk about structures, right? Uh, you know, the, uh, what is the blueprint of a corporation? Well, you know, there's, there's a lot of that. 
but what is the blueprint of a collaborative venture? Uh, you know what I'm saying? And mm. uh, as I said, uh, people that will take the course, uh, they will probably um, be into launching a traditional um, a startup, but just adopting some collaborative practices. Mm -hmm. That's fine. And these kind of patterns, they can still inform you know, um, um, their operations. Uh, even if it doesn't show a blueprint of a traditional organization, um, there's always processes that go beyond what the organization uh, is formally. Uh, and Verna Ali talks about that. When she talks about value networks, she says, you know, like forget about the walls of the company, forget about the, the, the roles in the company. People are uh, informally uh, exchanging, uh, you know, and, and communicating and conducting business um, that goes beyond <laughs> the, the formal structure of the organization, right? Yeah, absolutely. The, the, she, she, breaks, she breaks the traditional view uh, in at least two senses. The first is that uh, it's not about job positions, but about roles creating value, mm -hmm. right? And with your job position, you can be in different roles at the same time, creating value in that network. And you can have external people in your network creating value for you as a yes. creating program. So this this way he's breaking. Uh, and the other is like uh, she breaks the concept of processes, and she shifts it to uh, activities, right? And and this is not a minor a minor shift uh, because processes are very sequential and activities are more flexible in that in that sense and more uh, and more systemic. And, uh, and what she asks is, okay, these activities uh, are producing some outcomes uh, that are uh, in form of value. That, you know, no, they, they, uh, so so these uh, these deliverables, as she as she call she call them, uh, is is, uh, is again is a very value oriented uh, perspective because you're talking only about valuable things moving around roles. So it's not about uh, outputs of processes moving through structures and job positions, but it's a completely different way of seeing things. So, uh, so uh, yeah. So I I uh, I I remember when I when I I, I first exposed uh, the value network analysis to to Sergio from Xnet, he was like, wow. So because I, I told them, I think that what you do, I, I, I hear you and I see you and I see when you discuss about things, about how to get fund and everything. And I see that you're, use, you're doing this uh, in a very uh, unconscious and uh, let's say not uh, systematic way. But you're doing, essentially you're doing this because you are seeing opportunities, uh, seeing people not as position, but what what they're doing in the network and all that. And she was like, and, and when and when I exposed the Bernali methodology to him, he was like, "Wow, yeah, that's it, exactly. Yeah. This is it. This is it." So she she Bernali, she has the credit to do something very important that is to 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 model, to 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 bring a methodology. Uh, that completely that completely puts you in a different way of thinking about yes. how you you create value in in, in the world, right? And you, or yeah. let's say no, no, don't create value. You you do business in the world, okay? Let's put it that way. So you do. So it, this is another way to to see how business are uh, are doing in the world, right? Uh, so I I we. We after that after Sergio saw that very clear. We 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 we, we are using it, and I tell you that um, a very simple uh, a very simple exercise, very preliminary exercise of value network analysis, following the methodology of Bernali, uh, starts very interesting conversations with the people in the in the room, and they suddenly they understand why other people is doing what and uh, why some exchanges. And and who's missing there and and, and and all that and and I and I would say a shared vision on how that could run better. Okay. Yeah. Well, you know, and there's there's this thing where uh, you have an organization and you can or you can analyze its own value network, uh, but there is also uh, the case where you are alone in your basement, tinkering about something, playing with some electronics, and you see. 
you, you, you find that, hey, uh, maybe some other people would like to do the same thing or, or, or play with this, uh, or maybe this can provide a, a, a function for something, uh, you know, something valuable in the market. Uh, and then you have to build your value system essentially uh, from scratch. Uh, so now you're designing, you're designing a sort of an emergent organization that, that will, mm -hmm. will develop, will branch into, you know, something, uh, a, a value system that, that, can, that can fulfill uh, the requirements for this product to reach the market, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so there's the genesis and the <clears> development <throat> of a value system. Then there is also the assessment or the analysis of an existing organization uh, you know, the extraction of, of its value system structure, right? Mm. Um, and um, I guess what we want in this course is to make people sensitive to, to uh, and, and I'm borrowing from your vocabulary here, to this network mindset first uh, and, and have them, have them uh, you know, um, imprint the initial motion for the value network to be created. Because I don't think collaborative ventures, you can put them in place like you put in place an engine. I don't, think, I don't think you can buy the parts, like you can get the parts and put them together into, oh, here's a collaborative venture. Uh, it's something more organic. I think it's something that you need to guide as it develops and, mm -hmm. and steer, steer mm -hmm. as it develops. Uh, always having in mind that you need to develop some functionality within this organization. Uh, you see what I'm saying? But you cannot yeah. just take it and put it in place like you take a, a part of the engine of a car and just mm -hmm. install it there. You know what I'm saying? Oh, I'm gonna change the alternator. So here, boom, unscrew this and put that in. Uh, it's the organiz I don't think the organizations, um, the, mechanic, the mechanistic model of enterprise, uh, which is old fashioned today, you know, uh, it, used to, it used to be like that. People used to mm -hmm. see organizations like, like uh, mechanics, like like engines, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But it doesn't work yeah. like that. So, um, yeah. So in the well, genesis they, of the value network, yes, go ahead. No, they, they do if they have a monopoly, which which happens a lot of times. Okay, but otherwise that, that makes no sense. I have a question now. Now I was seeing this, and uh, why collaborative entrepreneurship and not open entrepreneurship? Um, uh, I know it's, it's wording is semantics, but why not? Yes, uh, because because open. Um, okay, here um, the, the the answer is here. What are the features of um, a collaborative venture? And here you find transparency, openness. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, there's also this slide here, which talks about uh, important concepts when you talk about collaborative entrepreneurship. Transparency, openness, synergy, synergy, hmm. emergence, self-organization. Um, hmm. You know, you, 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 you spoke about network mindset, um, so I, I'm gonna put it here. I, I would, uh, I, because I, all, all, all these concepts, important concepts are in the, in the semantic field of open as well. So, uh, and, I, and I say this because um, this, this, we, we, go to, we have to sell this course ourselves, right? So, um, and I think open now is, is a buzzword that is still have, yeah. some, tra have some traction. Uh, for instance, open innovation. Nobody's going to think about closed innovation, you know, <laughs> that's unthinkable. And so, and another things like uh, like open, um, yeah, the, the open world that that's just something that that uh, that we want now. The internet, the culture of the internet, just won. There's something I say to to the people I to the to the people I'm uh, I'm talking uh, now is that for instance I I ask them if they know what's the most important. Uh, uh, business operation in terms of selling a software company ever you know what what was the the the, the most expensive uh, the most expensive software company sold ever no no you don't know right it, it happened last year it happened just very recently and it was not LinkedIn and it was not whatsapp and it, no 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 it was Red Hat 
Red Hat to IBM for $34,000 million. Okay. So I t I'm telling this to the people. You're, you're, you're thinking about WhatsApp and you think about LinkedIn and you don't realize that there's a company that is making open software and making money with that that has been sold for twice or three or four times these companies you are looking at. Right? Okay. So, so I, 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 the, the first thing I try to, to, to tell them is that open, open is just uh, it's, it's a magic word. Uh, and I and I and I show them why, and I, I and I tell them about the Android mode, Android Android uh, uh, business yeah. model, yeah, and all that. So I, I I I go there and I say, so this is this is now. This is not the future. This is now. This is happening. And the biggest business are uh, have a business uh, an open business model behind. It. It's just it's not in the news, or you don't see it in the news, but it's happening and it's happening, right? So um. So open is a very important word now, um, and uh, and I was wondering why not open open entrepreneurship. Yeah, very so good just, question. Very good question. Just, yeah, just for just for marketing this course, right? So um, yeah, and uh, and the other thing about the uh, the about the uh, about a course that uh, that is going to be structured in different sessions that are going to run in in, in months, uh, the uh, that. I think that the, the, if you can give them some theoretical, but at least some practical steps, so they can start to put in practice what and build on the previous step, you know, like uh, like uh, like doing a better version of your project uh, in, a, in each step, in each session you, you you come. That would be very interesting as well because people learn uh, by doing. We we all know that. So we're going to be more effective. If we want to, 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 to open these ideas to some people, we cannot, we cannot do that in a, in a month, in a two months course. We have to do that in, in a 15 minutes or one, one hour or one session, four hour session uh, uh, class. But uh, I think that we have to put them to, put them to, to start to at least behave in the way we want them to behave to do a, a collaborative uh, uh, entrepreneurship, right? Yes. So, um, I, I, pedagogically, I would think about, about that too. And I, and I will make you, a, I will think a little bit more and I will, and I will make a proposal to you how to structure uh, things and to account the, the current structure and what we're talking about today. Yes. Uh, point well taken. Uh, listen, um, I will definitely uh, let me uh, change my. Uh, I want to create more space on my on my computer here. Um, <clears throat> elements. Uh, just a second. Open. So yeah, what, what I have to say about the about the about the content of the course is that uh, I I think it's in, it's interesting. I mean, uh, I think all all of what you're proposing is relevant. Okay, I don't see anything here that is not relevant for someone that wants to 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 start something like more in, in a more collaborative way. Uh, so uh, I have no comments in that sense. But uh, yeah. Uh, but for instance, what I what I try to do with the Pantheon model is just to 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 capture uh, uh, what I what we call a group of practices that you want to that that you expect to find in a collaborative uh, in a collaborative uh, and, uh, organization, okay, or an open organization or, or a peer to peer organization, as like I like to like to see it. You know? But yes. uh, so uh, if we, if, I think it would be pedagogical as well if we can uh, package a little bit all the things we're seeing here in, in a sort of, um, of concrete behaviors, okay, to, to pursue this, uh, this collaborative uh, entrepreneurship, right? In, in any of the, when we talk about resources, when we talk about, outreach when we talk about innovation strategy 
all that. If we can have, if we, if we can identify some concrete behaviors, we expect them to, to adopt. If they want to be successful, okay? And if we can show them to a couple of exercises, so they can practice a little bit and they can feel, uh, and they can feel uh, what is this about, that would be very interesting as well in, in each of the, of the classes. Yeah. And, uh, and, uh, and I, we have ideas for that. Uh, and, uh, and I'm sure that we can get more ideas from the people in the course. And, uh, as I, I like the, the idea that this can be co-created with the, uh, at least the first uh, uh, participants. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so do, do you have time to, to go uh, rapidly on, on any one of these uh, elements here? Mm, uh, is there is any of those elements that uh, any of them that are you more concerned or are you more uh, unsure or uh, about? Uh, maybe uh, focus on um, uh, resources is good to focus on with you, and the value proposition is good to focus on with you. Hmm. Um, and they're I guess, yeah, so that's that's why that's why uh, I wanted to turn it around. If you want to talk about value proposition, you know, yeah, you have yeah, it's nice to talk about the vision or the mission or all that, but uh, it's nice to know about uh, resources first, so you can connect, uh, you can frame the conversation about the value proposition yeah. with resources you have at hand, right? Yeah, and you can build on. Right. To yeah. How much time more you have now? Uh, 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 at least half an hour. Okay. Okay. So let me walk you through uh, some points here, just to just to get something from you, some feedback, um, mm -hmm. and and maybe you develop a deeper understanding. Mm -hmm. So we do we do want to have uh, uh, one or two sessions uh, about introduction to the collaborative economy, right? Um, now you're proposing the word open economy or open entrepreneurship. You know, we've been running with collaborative economy here in Canada. I think it's, uh, it's, it's catching on uh, pretty rapidly. So, um, you know, it's good to give the students an example uh, of a collaborative entrepreneurship and why uh, it is practical. Uh, and, uh, you know, here we have a, an example from Sensorica, but when we think about the content of the course, we can find other examples online of hybrid organizations or collaborative organizations. Uh, this one in particular shows that, uh, you know, uh, people can get together and build a prototype and, uh, and then uh, show it around to find a, a, a buyers uh, with a, a reduction of, uh, you know, more than 80% mm -hmm. of the uh, initial financial costs. Uh, mm -hmm. Just by mutualizing equipment, tools, spaces, and working collaboratively with each other, sharing equity uh, in the project rather than paying each other salaries. Um, mm -hmm. So just by putting stuff together and collaborating, uh, you avoid going to the bank uh, to get the $77,000 that you would need to um, buy tools, uh, rent equipment, rent space, and, and pay artists and engineers uh, to design this thing, right? Mm. Uh, it doesn't mean that these people are not working. They are, uh, but, but they form a social contract saying nobody's paying anybody, but my work is, 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 is an investment. So in, in, at the beginning, when we started to talk, you say collaborative entrepreneurs need to see themselves more as, a, more as investors. Um, I totally resonate with that idea. Uh, and, and it's, and, and it's, um, and it's um, included in, in this, in this course. Um, talking about the introduction, you know, we want to talk to people about, uh, put people in the historical context of why is this emerging now? Why do we have, why do we talk about peer-to-peer -peer and collaborative economy? Uh, what happened in the development of the internet, uh, new possibilities that these tools uh, provided us uh, and, you know, the emergence of new types of uh, organizations like platform uh, corporations and platform co-ops and uh, uh, data companies and so on and so forth uh, with the advent of you know decentralized peer-to-peer -peer, uh, uh, infrastructures uh, and the possibility to have DAOs mm. you know this um, um, autonomous organization and so on. so put people into context um, talk about this mm -hmm. big uh, 
co-evolution between IoT blockchain and AI that will transform the world somehow, uh, some economic mm -hmm. tendencies, um, talking about platform mm -hmm. cooperatives movement, uh, platform capitalism movement, and also the peer-to-peer, -peer, the in-between. Um, mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. then we want to frame the we want to frame the course to say, well, you have these new type of organizations, uh, part of this open or collaborative entrepreneurship model, uh, stuff that functions like Sensorica and Bitcoin. Well, that is that is that is that is on the catwalk. That is what you see when fashion comes out, uh, and you're, you're not going to see them on the street. Uh, it's just design stuff, right? It's it's too avant-garde. It's too out there as organizational forms um, mm. to be very popular today. Uh, but we're, we're going towards that, you know, somehow. Uh, and, and we want to make the course for hybrid organizations. Mm -hmm. For organizations like, for example, like Adafruit. For people that want to, you know, play with between traditional model and network models. Mm -hmm. You know, you have Adafruit uh, that has, you know, it's a traditional organization. It does some manufacturing, does a distribution, owns the brand, um, but relies on an on open network for innovation. As opposed to Radio Shack, it caters to the same people, which are the uh, do-it-yourselfers, <coughs> enthusiasts about the electronics. They cater to the same market, but they don't mm -hmm. function the same way. <coughs> Adafruit was the, the highest growing company in the States for years. It grew 700% for sustained growth for <coughs> for three years mm -hmm. amazing we know venture capital can you imagine that yeah. <laughs> and radio shack is going downwards um you can see how model replaces the other one in the market yeah. so you know we want to tell people you have an idea you know you don't have to you don't have to do like sensoric and bitcoin uh, and, and other things um you can be a hy hybrid model uh like adafruit <coughs> and this is mm. what we want to <laughs> we want to do Expose people a little bit about economy, what is entrepreneurship, talk about some general concepts, scarcity versus abundance. When you talk about network mindset, I also want people to get into the abundance mindset. Absolutely. Meaning uh, you need somebody with very specific skills. Uh, well, companies, they hire people and they work with whatever they have hired. Uh, so if they have 10 employees, well, that's their brain pool. Uh, collaborative entrepreneurship, open and collaborative entrepreneurship. Mm. Uh, you just go out there on the internet and, 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 and scout these open source communities and maybe you find the person that has the skills. Uh, so, you know, mm. your, your human resources is essentially the whole world uh, mm. if you have the proper value proposition to attract them to work for your project, right? So, uh, instead of saying, <clears throat> I'm going to work with the minimum amount of people that I can pay and employ <coughs> and make sure I have all the brain power that I need to, to put a mm. product on the market. Mm. That is the scarcity <laughs> mindset. You go to the abundance mindset saying, saying you know, I'm gonna put a message out there for this crazy idea and, and, and try to lure people into co collaborating with me, uh, you know, give them a value proposition and, and, and my, 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 my play uh, my game is played on the on, on the entire planet, essentially, right? Mm. Uh, now you're you're operating in an abundance uh, mindset where uh, the guy or the girl that has the proper idea for you, it exists somewhere on this planet, uh, mm. and there's many of them. You just have to find them, but there's an abundance of them, right? I I, I would connect that with the, something I learned as well very clear from the Las Indias which is that uh, the idea of artificial scarcity, right? To show yeah. how we are creating artificial scarcity and, and the effects of, of, the, of, the, of the creation of artificial scarcity. And finally, uh, the, uh, the, the reason why we create artificial scarcity, which most of the time is related to the business model, right? But uh, if you think about open business model, then uh, you have you are doing two things. You don't have to, to rely in, a, in an artificial scarcity to build your business model, and the, uh, in exchange of that, you are open to all this abundance of resources and uh, and so forth and so forth. 
So uh, uh, I think that introducing the idea of artificial scarcity and to see the effects of introducing the advantages are related to business models, right? To capture and to create little monopolies and all, all that. So, uh, I think that 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 that's uh, very important in the idea also to introduce and to see what is the effect, what is what what's the effect in our in our economies, in our democracies, and all that. Okay? The creation of this artificial uh, yes yes. And but the other thing is that about this first part of the, the introductory introductory session is that I put forward the value proposition for the people in the room, okay? Which is implied now, by the way, would, I will be more clear. Like, well, as we said, we're, we're, we're proposing a, a better way to do business in the world and to mm -hmm. have a better impact. We are proposing a way of working when you're going to learn, you're going to work with people you like, you're going to, uh, to uh, to grow organically, you know, you're not going to depend your decisions in people and other people, you know, uh, because of you, you're, you're not worried about diluting your <laughs> your share very quickly. You, you, we, we get rid of all that. Okay, so I think we, we, we should we should put that forward. Like uh, we're going to work in a different way. We will uh, better together, like the then spirit of people say. We're going to work in this very most friendly human, you know, uh, way, and very an interesting way. Because you're not going to do stupid things because you, if you're at, you're not adding value to the project, you stop doing that. Okay, so you, yeah. you, you, your your job always makes sense. Your work always makes sense. The second is that you're going to find an, a different way to finance this and to launch this and to share equity and all that build on the value everyone's provide and all, all that. So, and then you're going to be more innovative and everything everything I'm saying is implied in, 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 in the presentation you showed me. Uh, but, uh, but we should put this more clear so they feel compelled and then they feel uh, engaged, you know, with the discourse, you know. Exactly, well, uh, yes, um, so, <clears throat> Yes, that goes when we, when we develop the content for every one of these uh, parts. Uh, what I hear from you is that the value proposition goes mm -hmm. hand in hand with what we call the outreach, uh, where you're going after people and resources and you know, tangible resources uh, and other types of resources. Where is the um, outreach um, operations? Um, resources, outreach, yes. Uh, because, yeah, these sections here will be interconnected in the course because essentially the value proposition in a, in a collaborative venture is not mm -hmm. just for your customers and users. <clears throat> uh, the value proposition is also to get in participation of people and get an influx of resources as well. Uh, because with people come not just skills and time, but also somebody might have a 3D printer at home, somebody might have a lab in their basement, uh, somebody might have a prototype already done or half done or some code already written. Um, so, um, you know, this will save us, um, um, you know, time and also uh, money, financial resources to, to get them. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, the value proposition here, when we think about it in, in this context, again, um, there's this theme all around um, the the course, uh, which is that um, the outside and the inside are of, a, of, a, of a collaborative enterprise are strongly connected. And sometimes they mix. Uh, so in a traditional business model, you have the inside, the production unit, and the outside, the market, right? Well, these things blend in collaborative entrepreneurship. And when you think about value proposition, it's not just addressing the market with a value proposition, but it's actually addressing people out there to, 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 in an outreach campaign to come to participate or at least give you feedback on what you're doing. And by participation, we mean, by participation we mean we you know, provide skills and time to the venture, but also uh, some money, some material resources or spaces or so on and so on. You can't hear me? No. Very okay. jumpy. 
<laughs> okay, jumpy, because I was probably clicking around too much. Um, so I was saying that okay. it's a little better now, right? Yeah, now it's perfect. Okay, so I was saying that, uh, you know, vision, mission, and positioning, mm -hmm. it's connected to, uh, no, sorry, the value proposition is connected to the outreach and to resources because mm -hmm. there's this theme uh, where the outside and the inside are interconnected in, in open and collaborative enterprise, right? Uh, right. And so uh, when we craft a value proposition, we're not just addressing we're not just addressing the market, we mm -hmm. are actually um, uh, addressing people out there as well to at least give us uh, some feedback on what we're doing. Is there a market for what we try to do? Um, is there a need out there? At least give us feedback or to jump in and participate, uh, provide skills and time, as well as you know, financial resources, equipment, tools, um, and spaces, and, and whatever they might have, right? Mm -hmm. So the value proposition here, um, it's, it's, it's twofold, is uh, addressing the market uh, for the value that we're about to provide, uh, uh, and, and so that you know, people, people can decide to spend some resources to acquire what we offer, but also some of these people, they can become prosumers, not just consumers, they can provide feedback and they, and they fold in and become full participants uh, in, in our venture. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think there is this theme that, that runs over everything, uh, right? Uh, and I, yeah, and I, and I would connect uh, what, what you just said with uh, the, the, let's say the property of your, of your of your company or your firm or whatever you do, uh, it's going to be more resilient because of that. And I, I will send you a, a, a talk. I, I'm going to transcribe a talk I, I gave, uh, mm -hmm. I gave uh, last year on um, the business school I, 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 I teach and I do research. And uh, uh, because uh, this, uh, what you said, uh, by, by breaking all, all these uh, traditional walls, you're making your firm much more uh, uh, robust uh, against against uh, against uncertainty, uncertain volatility, about you know complexity. About um, yes, you're, you're going to build your reputation more easily. You're going to resist an attack to your reputation more easily because there's a network with you. It's not just you. This is everything is so intervened. That you you have you have a lot of backup for communication for creating for innovating for for everything. Right? Yes, um, I was trying to put some uh, links here. So, um, yeah. So anyway, so we discussed about the value proposition, how it is connected to outreach, which mm -hmm. delivers it, and and to resource intake. Mm -hmm. um, you spoke about uh, the, the, the company that has been sold uh, recently for uh, a ton of money. Uh, one of the most expensive companies, you said it was Red Hat, uh, yeah. that was purchased by IBM, you said? IBM. IBM. Mm. Uh, well, yeah, well uh, it's the third largest operation ever. I mean, it's not only the highest software company, it's just the third largest operation ever between firms. So, so and, and, nobody, and people is not aware of that. But, but this is yes. reality happening now. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so talking about, uh, talking about innovation strategy, because uh, your point is, here's Red Hat, uh, their product is open, I mean, the, their product is based on, on something free and open source. Uh, obviously their product is a service, uh, right? Uh, but they take Linux, which is open source, uh, and they're not selling Linux like Microsoft mm. sells is, its Windows. Uh, but they provide services, consultancy services on top of that. <clears throat> so here's a business model built on something uh, that is completely open source. Uh, there's definitely an open innovation strategy there. Hmm. Um, and I want to I wanna complete that with, um, or complement that with what we observe people coming through the lab. So these are wannabe entrepreneurs. They have been working on a project in their basement. They come up now. Uh, they see some value in being at the Sensoica lab because they can use the 3D printer, they can talk to people that have complementary skills. <clears throat> um, for whatever reason, you know, they come out of their basement in the world and, um, 
And then when they come to Sensorica, you know, we, we, we say, well, here we develop open source stuff. So if you develop something, you have to share it with the community uh, and uh, your project can be remixed by anyone else. Uh, and they're scared. Uh, similar when we uh, provide services for uh, existing companies for research and development, we say all the technologies that we can develop for you uh, are necessarily open source. <coughs> Uh, and, uh, <clears throat> and and they get scared. And then we engage them into this discussion uh, about innovation well, strategy. You have a recent scare and you don't have figured out your business model, I mean, it makes sense to be scared. But uh, we have to show plenty of, uh, plenty of reasons and, uh, and uh, why open is the right strategy. Uh, and, and actually, when I, when I ask myself, when I'm doing something like my business, like Pantheon work, like, I don't think, should I open this? I, is there any reason I have, or is it the opposite way? I say, is there any reason why I should, I should not open this, you know? So, because I know, I know that, I know how it works. So, um, I think that we, we have to show, uh, we have to show uh, why, uh, in, or in what context at least, so, uh, so they can feel more, more, more secure, more, more, more confident let's say, to, to do something like this. But in what conditions you're safe to do this, right? And you're exactly. Going to, and then you're going to, be, and you're going to out-compete uh, other people because of you doing this. And, uh, and if you, I think we put this up front, and we know that if you do this in these conditions, you're going to, you're going to crash and, and it's not going to work. But if you do this uh, in, the right, in the right position and the right way, uh, nothing can go wrong, right? This is it's the opposite way. It can go wrong if you don't open it. So, um, uh, so, and I think we can be very convincing with we choose the right examples. And I, I and I and I was thinking about saying the strat the innovation strategy slide. Uh, do you know Hire, uh, the Chinese company? Um, no. They sell. Um, uh, uh, washer machines and and fridge fridges. Do you know? How do you write it? Higher. Hi. Uh, uh, H. Yeah. Uh, no. Uh, H A E R. Uh, let's see. Uh, I'll write it to you uh, here. Oh. Higher. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah, you got it? No, uh, here. Let's yeah, bring. I think I got it. Okay. Yeah, higher. This. Yeah. We, we, this, is, this is something amazing. This is uh, visionary that is building what we're doing, but the top down is the opposite way, the Chinese way, right? <laughs> but yes, yes, yes. Okay. <clears throat> it's, it's really amazing what they're doing. And, uh, and, and, uh, and we, we can explain how this, uh, this traditional company that has moved to a, to a way of, of, of doing operations uh, that maybe they are not open in that sense, but the, the way they approach, the way they're doing business, uh, I, I, in, my, in my perspective, it doesn't, matter, it doesn't matter if you want to copy them because they innovate so quickly, so rapidly that it yes. doesn't matter. You don't have. They, I. I don't think they. 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 They are. I. I. I don't. I don't think they have open patents, but I don't yeah. think they care because uh, they move so fast that uh, when you copy them, they're in the next product. So you're late, right? So um. Uh. uh and uh, see, if we, if we show this this dynamics in the market, like the dynamics that higher is exploding right now. Uh, again, it's very impressive on these people, and, and the vision that the that that the well, not the leader of this transformation has in mind. You see that you see that suddenly the 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 close world is not that important when when you are doing things in such connected and an emergent way through uh, through an ecosystem, then be closed uh, um, to protect anything that makes no sense because. Things going so fast that it doesn't matter. It just doesn't matter. And I think Hyde is a really good example of that. Yeah. <clears throat> yes. So, um, yeah. So, 
I think I think this this particular section of the course here is to uh, is to help uh, these individuals uh, think strategically about innovation uh, and and link that to business models. Um, maybe part of the content would be to go and see companies that are successful, like Adafruit. Also, you have Red Hat, mm-hmm. Adafruit. You have this company that you just mentioned, but then you have tons of others. You have IBM that has already invested a billion dollar in open source software development like like the linux in, and in intel and ibm are the are the highest uh, the biggest contributors yes. to the kernel of linux yes. and they're a private company so yeah yeah so again we have to show them that it's happening right and that the that uh and and again i i we have to address the concepts from the very beginning because they're right to have concepts about open anything so what we have to show is that okay this is this is the playground that is safe to open, right? And and uh, if you don't de- do this, uh, you're right to be concerned. And uh, but if you go this way, we have plenty of evidence that is not only that that is not only that is working now. That it's that's probably the future. That this this is probably the way that is going to make uh, 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 obsolete the old ways of doing things, right? Exactly. So there, there are different reasons to open your innovation. One of them is to, you know, uh, be compatible uh, or to create a whole ecosystem around you by allowing others to uh, build on top of what you have done. Since it's open source, they can remix, they can, they can create mm-hmm. uh, an ecosystem of product that reinforces your position. Mm-hmm. So there's strategic, this is why Tesla opened their patents for a car, for the electric car, uh, because they want to mm-hmm. sell the battery, they don't want to sell the car, essentially. Uh, they're not a car company, they're a utility company. Uh, so, hey, open up the market. How do you do that? Well, just open up your patents on, on, on the electric car. And there's going to be more cars on the street because other companies will, will copy you. Uh, you say, mm-hmm. So you see one reason why uh, engaging in open innovation. Another one is standards. Um, you know, creating standards so that you can be interoperable with other people in the market. Uh, reducing your cost uh, of, of design by remixing open source speed of innovation. It's, it's another one. Mm. But the thing here is that everything is interconnected. Meaning, <clears throat> you know, if you, if you become an open collaborative entrepreneur, meaning that uh, by being more collaborative, more open, you have less control over, over the technology that you inherit, that your business inherits. Uh, therefore, you're more going towards uh, open source licensing or creative commons licensing. Uh, by going that road, you have to make sure, and, and, you, and you touched on this point, you have to make sure that you are fast uh, because you're switching from a game of protection to a game of speed to market, right? And, mm. and so, you, so everything here, um, you know, the outreach, you have to make sure that you, you, you go, you go and, and announce the market that you're coming and, and gather all these resources, including the skills rapidly to you um, mm. to, to complete the thing, that you gather mm. res- these resources around you fast and that your operations, you know, that's another big one here, that your operations are streamlined. Um, so the, the way you work is extremely efficient um, and, allows you to, and allows you to complete, to complete the job. Uh, mm. So, you know, uh, for resources, you can go do a Kickstarter, uh, or you can draw resources from your immediate collaborators, um, <clears throat> uh, and uh, and for operations, you know, you 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 got you gotta you got you gotta have some some process project management tools, resource management tools in place that you know uh, um, allows you to cope with the complexity uh, of of your enterprise, um, mm-hmm. and make sure you stay on track. Uh, you know what I'm saying? So the tools that you mm-hmm. use is, is pretty, uh, pretty important. You do proper planning, yeah. um, you know, mm-hmm. uh, you, and you use the proper tools. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, you know, innovation strategy, meaning uh, it's not that if you open by magic, you've got to do better. <laughs> if, you, if you open, it, it means that you have to move from a protective strategy to a, a, a speed strategy and that you need to put in place all the mechanisms for your organization to allow you to go fast, right? Otherwise, yeah, yeah. otherwise you, 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 know, you, you will be surpassed in the market. People are going to jump over you. Uh, they're going to copy what you did and copy what other people have done <laughs> and, and beat you to the market, right? Mm. Uh, be the first ones to present a, pro- a product to their customers, uh, mm. which is probably the strategy of this Chinese company. Uh, 
Hmm. Uh, because China, you know, China doesn't care about intellectual property so much. Yeah, that's why I, I put the example. I mean, I don't think they care to enforce their patents. I don't know. We we could uh, that's some research of that. But Hire has like a like dozens of uh, has been uh, a matter uh, an object of, of study of, of dozens of, of Harvard cases. What they have been doing consistently in the last decades are deepening this this way of working that, and, I, and, and I'm talking about market dynamics. That's why I want to bring the students. That these are the market dynamics that we can explore, exploit thanks to the open mindset, right? An open way to do things. Um, yeah. Either you are a closed or a completely open company, right? But, uh, but what higher, I, I, I is doing in that sense to promote this, to to do this bottom-up, bottom, completely bottom-up strategy of innovation and 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 and, and spotting uh, very quickly uh, uh, opportunities and leveraging in uh, resources in the whole company very quickly. You know they they're doing this very 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 well. So um, they they they're growing insanely. You know and they, it's the, one of the most successful companies. So. Uh, uh, so I don't know. We have to talk about these these things that are happening now, you know, and uh, they're they're changing the rules, the traditional rules of being on going to the market, right? Um, yeah. And uh, and we and we can talk about little companies, you know, and we can talk about big companies, right? We have we we have to show that this is happening at all levels, right? And uh, and probably what whatever they they the 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 kind of company their ambition they 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 can they 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 can they can uh, they can take into account the the collaborative and uh, uh, the as a as a viable and desirable way of of doing it right yes. Good. Well, I'm mindful a little bit about your time, uh, and I think uh, there is somebody visiting the lab to work on some other things. Um, the person is late anyway, so even if she comes, uh, we can still continue. But uh, but also um, mindful about about your time. Right. Uh, how can we wrap mm -hmm. this up? I mean, what what are the takeaways uh, that that um, um, are there any specific comments or maybe some some ideas about uh, how to uh, proceed further with this work i i i would uh, i would work in the pedagogic uh, perspective right to think every session separately right we, because we we know the all it's all connected so we don't have to worry about that it's going to be connected anyway right we yes. cannot uh, so uh, so we can we have to to work separately in each in each of the sessions and I, and i would and i and i and i told you i i'm going to think i'm going to think about a different structure i mean the contents are there right but i'm yeah. worried about uh, i'm worried about more the structure and the and doing an engaging and engaging experience for for the for the attendants right for the participant so uh, i'm going to propose you uh, 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 well, I'm going to pitch a different structure. I'm going to propose you how to work uh, the pedagogy of each of the of the sessions, okay? And um, yeah, and, and I think that I, and and and, on the, and in the meantime, I'm going to I'm going to talk about this course to my uh, to my ecosystem around to the to the universities I I visit. To, to the uh, entrepreneurship services of the local government, you know, and uh, and I uh, and I talk to, and I'm going to see how how uh, what 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 the reaction is and uh, and if I can get some inputs about how to sell this, okay, uh, and 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 even to find a partner to 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 deliver this course uh, so we can. Because if we have an institutional but uh, backup, I think that that's going to help to to attract. Oh yeah, for sure, people. for sure. Uh, we do have yeah. some institutions here in Quebec. Mm -hmm. We have University of Sherbrooke, okay. 
uh, University of Sherbrooke is interested. Uh, they have a, a, a lab, an open innovation lab for the industry 4.0 movement. And they're mm. very, very interesting in what, in, interested in what we do. And there's also mm. another living lab in, um, uh, affiliated with the university in Quebec here <laughs> in a smaller city mm. that are very, very interested in, in, in the course and they want to roll it out. So we have two academic institutions here in Quebec that mm. have, um, it's actually in the document, um, you have the links to these institutions. Um, yeah. um, and um, I will have another talk with these guys. Um, Listen, um, they also operate from uh, Barcelona. You might know them, EcoFintech Co-op. Uh, they mm -hmm. were connected with the Faircoin, Fair Co-op um, uh, people. Uh, yep. And um, so I had a chat with them yesterday. They were very interested of, of, about the course and they want to uh, set up a sort of a, a consultancy group, uh, but not like yours but more like um, providing IT tools, uh, working with uh, DAO stack, you know, mostly blockchain stuff. So I see you on the, on the sort of a business side, uh, organizational models, economic mm -hmm. models, um, metrics, assessment, uh, mapping, all that stuff. And they are more into tools, <coughs> yeah. uh, smart contracts, tools. Well, if you want to work collaboratively, uh, yeah. if you want to, formalize your ties with other organizations and have mm -hmm. some mutualization of resources and processes, well, uh, we can help you develop this IT infrastructure to do that, right? Uh, okay. and, and we can use blockchain because it's trustless, so you can create network of collaborative enterprises uh, and so on. And, uh, and another thing that we could do is uh, to, to set another, another conversation where I can show you the Pantheon model, okay? For sure, uh, for sure. I'm very interested, yes. Because uh, uh, there, uh, oh, but again, that's gonna be like the purest form of a peer-to-peer -peer organization, okay? Like more like yours, okay? Yes. So, um, so I do can see, uh, and I would love to have feedback from you, again, because uh, it should resonate uh, everything I, I, I will explain should resonate to you, but well, I, I owe you one. I got I got feedback from you for the course, so I owe you one for sure. Will <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and uh, and uh, and again, I think that could uh, maybe you, maybe you see some things in that in in that model that you would like to introduce in the in the course. Okay. Yes. Yes. So, so, so the, the thing is that you, maybe you can identify some ideas or, or some, or some key ideas, I, I'd say, or some uh, practices or some, uh, yeah, we will see what you can uh, remix from, from that, right? Yeah. I also and want I, you guys to connect. I mean, uh, you know, we're going to start collaborating. I help you, you help us with the course and everything else. Uh, if you if it happens for you to know to to you know to um, bump onto these guys here, uh, I think it, it will be nice because they think like yeah. us, Antonio. Okay. You know, they they're, okay. they're part so of our I, tribe. So yeah. I'll get in I'll, I'll get in touch with them because we have uh, we have common friends. So uh, that's going to be easy. For sure, for sure. Yes, yes. It's here in Barcelona, yeah. And we for have sure. common friends. Okay. Anyway, thank you very much for your time. Uh, and, thank you for uh, having me here. Yes, and like I said, uh, we'll continue to refine this and ping me whenever you need some uh, feedback on... Uh, I, I, I'm actually very interested in hearing more, di doing a deep dive into your model, for sure. Okay. Okay. Okay, have a nice Bye. day. Thank you. you.